this game tests you as a man. It tests you as a person. As soon as you leave the arbor, you've got no worries. It's a very hard lifestyle and it's not for everyone. It's hard on families. Most families have their dads home every night and you know, we don't get that comfort either. I've got to make sure my kids got everything they want in life. Be a fisherman, you have to be quite fearless. As much as you think it's all in your hands, it's not. And trust me, I've had a boat sink on me. It's losing, losing control. The beauty of this ground that is off of Brixham and being in Lime Bay is the fact that it's all soft and it's all flat ground. It's not just being able to catch fish. You need to have the right uh, mentality as well, you know. It's not like you could turn up really moody because you're just going to affect the, everybody else's moods and a few days bad fishing can put people down. My name's Ben. Skipper of a fishing boat, Hannah Beth too, 35 years old. Uh, I've been doing it since I was 16. from where I live, but the skipper, I've known him for years, so he's like a father figure to me, really. He knows everything. He's probably the best fisherman in this harbour. My name's Jack Mason, I'm from Lowestoft, and I've been working on a boat nearly five years. I was 20 when I first started, yeah. I wish I got into it earlier, but the opportunity wasn't there. No fishing industry in my town anymore. We've got Jack here, he's basically just tipping out the pot, giving all the whelks out. They all land on the riddle. He takes the old bait out. Generally, all the small stuff should go through the riddle. Once it comes off the riddle, really, we should only have um, a nice premium product. And then we've got Finch bagging up at the minute. And basically, his job is, just, is once again, it's quality control. The watch he's taking out, starfish. Picking out any old bait that might have been in there, bagging up the product. Once the bag's filled up, we'll take that off, put another bag on, and repeat the process. Then we got bait and stack. Basically, his job is to uh, put bait in the pots, and, which is most probably the most important job of all. But at the end of the day, he deciphers what we get, we can catch the next day. That's why it's got the most important. Uh, my name's James Finch I'm from Worstoff. I've been working on the boat for about three weeks. Um, obviously, new to the industry. Um, really loving it at the minute. I got the job through my mate Jack. You've got to get, give the spec and you get the spec back. This new guy has actually been a bundle of joy. Like He's definitely a shower, as in, you can't talk him through stuff. You need to show him how to do it. He's happy, um, which doing this job 
you know, you're either going to be happy or you're going to be highly miserable doing it. But he loves it, yeah, he really does love it. And it's nice to see someone actually enjoy doing what they're doing. Like, I, I can see him going far in this, this game, like, as long as he can stick it out. You know, you've got to take the rough with a smooth. Sometimes uh, you get caught in a bad storm, you know, and there's other places you'd rather be, you know. There's been a few times where I sort of think, where, where are you going to end up? But them sort of situations make you stronger. And uh, you just got to trust uh, trust your crew, trust your uh, trust your skipper, and you'll know, and you know everything's going to be all right. It's, uh, it's a big trust game. Steamed out in the morning. We steamed all the way to the gear, which was a good like two and a half hours on the way out from Lower Soft. You could hear the engine was just not right. It was like gargling. It was it didn't sound right at all. I had a good look down the engine room and couldn't see anything wrong. And I remember looking outside on deck and there was a little bit of surface water on the deck. Well, we had a we had a, a deck wash that just fed all the time. And so I, I thought, ah, oh, it's just a deck wash on the deck. So I didn't think nothing of it. Went out on deck and went to go and throw this deck wash over the side. And then noticed that the deck washer uh, was already over the side, which then sort of spanned me out a little bit. So I was thinking, why have I got water on my deck? I was thinking to myself, I'll have a look in the accommodation up the bow. And so I'm, as I swung the accommodation door open, it was like four runs to this ladder. The water was already sort of like two, two and a half runs up the ladder. We sat there trying to bucket and bucket and bucket and it, it just wasn't going anywhere. And I remember stopping to the guys because like I say we were going for it. I remember just being like, like really out of breath and just saying right, just stop a second, just stop a second. And um, where it had, was like kind of two and a half, it was now touching that third, third sort of ladder and that was the point where I kind of knew that the boat was sinking faster than I could save it. That Southern Star, it, it tried to sink on me a couple of times, it was almost like it didn't want to be a boat. I've come running in the wheelhouse and I've called them a mayday. The Coast Guard just want to know everything, you know, and I'm telling them everything and trying to tell them like at the same time, like, look, I need to go. I've, I've told you as much as I'm going to sell you. I need to go because I need to try and save my boat. Worst feeling I've ever felt in my entire life. Uh, it, I quit. I quit fishing because of it. Uh, broke my heart. When Ben decided to leave fishing, I asked him whether it's what he really wants to do. So he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders to get the job done and right. He doesn't have any of that help from the crew. The crew just do the catch inside and he has all the rest of the pressure on his shoulders. Uh, as a skipper, you're always in control. You control your crew, you control your boat, you control the maintenance, you control your winch, you control of everything. You're always in control. And that losing control just ruined me. This is one place you do not want to lose control ever. And like I say, that losing control just, it broke me. Robert did broke me as a, as a man inside. Like, you feel invincible when you get out of these problems and you get back into the arb and you think, fucking yes, save my boat, save my crew, everyone's alive. Fuck, I'm never doing that again. You get yourself into them situations. That's what happens as fishermen. You do get yourself into them, but that one got me, you know. I didn't get back in the arm with my boat. I ended up having to get escorted and people's lives were slightly at risk and uh, too much for me, I didn't like it. My name's Jade Bass. I'm 33 and I'm Ben Bass's wife. It's up here, I met Ben when I was 15. Me and Ben, we met down Peyton Harbour and uh, he was working on one of the boats down there. I met him as I was going past one day and that was it from there. <laughs> She's definitely my rock and at the same time I'm, I'm definitely hers as well. Yeah, we are each other's rock and we support each other no, no matter what. 
and like I said before, family is a big thing to me and Ben. It's everything. Yeah, it's hard being a, a fisherman's wife. Uh, it's like you said, it's like being a, it's like being a single mum, but without the financial problems. Raising children while he's away is, that is the hardest part for me. You get a lot of time to think, they get a lot of time to think. It, it can cause issues, but it, it hasn't for me and Ben luckily. I think we've kind of grown up together, so that's kind of our comfort, is each other. You know, when it's a kid's birthdays and stuff, and the kids are like, she's got to explain it in that nicer way that, all right, um, your dad's not going to be here, but you know, she's always supported what I've done and she's always made sure that the kids have, you know, helped support me and what I've done as well. Because oh, I've been testing times when you do step there and you do think when everything's going wrong and the fishing's rubbish and the tides are rubbish and everything's just, everything just feels like it's going wrong and yet you got to try and be strong and guide yourself through it. And, Having Jade there has definitely helped that. The Seven Star, that's the boat that sunk. I had that phone call from him and uh, I'm just happy that he had the sense to do everything that he was trained to do. And he saved everyone on board himself and I'm so proud of him for that, really proud of him for that. He's done everything in the book. Even my, even my missus was exactly the same, Ben, why are you kill, digging yourself about it? Like, everyone's alive, that's the main thing. You did, ev if anything, you did everything right. You know, put your foot in some rope and you could be sent off the back of that boat. And, and if you haven't got a knife in your hands to cut yourself free, you're going down with the with the box, which is a horrible thought. So it, it's I'm aware of the dangers, and just hope that it never ever happens on his boat. Personal friends, like proper personal friends, people that I would invite to your wedding, most probably 20. Too many, mate. And I'd like to say in 20 years of doing it, it would only be 20, but that would be a lie as well, because you could most probably double it. But that's one. That's another thing of being a fisherman, something you have to get used to. Right? Uh, ben had one friend, uh, Wade. Sadly, he passed away when he was 21. He, uh, he drowned. And uh, them two were like brothers. Their bond was amazing. They had tattoos done together and just done everything together. Wade become a part of our family. Wade was definitely a massive part of Ben's life and he will always be remembered. Always. You know, some of the stories that I've heard and how he's been out there, to even want to go back out there again after it all, it would be crazy. It was a worry, him going back out, uh, thinking, you know, if anything like that was going to happen again to him, you don't want them, you don't want them feelings, you don't, I'd rather be at home and have a land job than worrying about him being out there. But he loves it, so he's got to do what he loves, and I'm not going to stop him from doing that. I think there's a big, big fishing community in Brixham. You know, you don't really hear of them until really a tragedy has happened, and then you will see the community, and that's where I think the fishing community come together and they try and raise that money and try and support the fishermen's mission and RNLI because they really, really do need help to keep the charities going because they're amazing. We, we made it in just in right time to be honest. Uh, like I say, the weather is just starting to pick up now. 
Luckily, we just got in just before the weather started to kick off again. Can I say, they've all still got their fingers and toes, and hopefully uh, an extra few quid in their pocket. Yeah, they've got a few days off now. They've got a few days off, I like to just call it a day in. Uh, I'll be down there in the morning just to do a lot of maintenance. I always uh, am, am grateful for, for, for the people that do help me. They said they're already going to bed with a DVD and going to order a takeaway, so yeah, I don't think they'll be venturing too far. I've said before, money is always a pro, but it's not when it's risking his life. That's not worth it to me, but um, crazy fishermen are crazy fishermen. To them, it's worth it. Um, don't think it's my decision. He's got to know whether he wants to carry on with that, but every time he has come away from sea before, three months he's back. He needs to go down to the beach and put his hands in the ocean.